The topic of today's video is uh, prayer, meditation, and contemplation. What's the difference? And so, uh, it, to take up this question between these three different ways of, of, ex of uh, actualizing what I mentioned in the last video is actualizing our, uh, our, re uh, our spiritual connection to the source of life, um, what is, what, how, how do we, how can we make some general statements about these three apparently distinct forms of activity, prayer, meditation, and contemplation? Well, these are varieties of spirituality. Well, great. Well, what's spirituality? Well, this is a very, it's a helpful term, is a, an interesting history. I refer you to some of my books uh, to, to learn more about the history of this term. Um, but uh, broadly, it can be broadly uh, defined and more narrowly defined. And if you, read a, if you read widely in the literature of spirituality, we'll find that there's a more pragmatic kind of non-spiritual interpretation of spirituality, more in, in psychological terms or in terms of human fulfillment. And in this case, in these more broad definitions of spirituality, it's, it's thought of as activities that promote the wholeness of life. No one's against wholeness of life. That is extraordinary. But what does that mean? It seems a bit vague. Yes, it's a broad definition. Now, more narrow definitions of spirituality uh, add something to that, that the wholeness of life uh, is itself uh, only possible when the spiritual or the immaterial dimension uh, the strictly speaking religious side of life is also uh, factored in. And so we, we can define it in this way. Spirituality is focus, a focus on the imma immaterial side of life and the inner personal dimension of human experience. So you add to wholeness immateriality. Now, even narrower, more narrow definitions of spirituality start to associate spirituality with Christian spirituality or Buddhist spirituality or Hindu spirituality or Sikh spirituality. And those as religious, religious traditions will necessarily add to the idea of the wholeness of life a stress upon the immaterial side of life. Because even Buddhism, though it doesn't uh, ultimately use theistic language, is not concerned finally with just the material processes. It sees the material processes of life as, uh, it's, as themselves situated within a, a wider background of, of uh, radiant, um, indescribable consciousness. Even the word consciousness has to drop away at some point. So, great, we, we have some sense of the, the narrowness and the broadness of this term, but spirituality, it's clear, that's, that's a Western word, that's an English word, spirituality, but in English we, we, we got that from French. And Fr French receives it from a Latin word, spirit, spiritu spiritus, spiritualis. So, is it possible? This is a course in the wisdom of world of the world's religions, and often much of what we do in this setting is makes use of Latin and Greek terms, French terms, German terms, through English medium. How about from other traditions? We have the 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 um, we have the Latin word spirituality. We have the, a Greek-based word mysticism. But we there's no reason why we have to call this spirituality or mysticism. We could also, and I'll have to come up with a kind of a funny sounding, at least for now, a neologism. How about yogaology? Because after all, yoga names the same dimension and the same practices in the, in the Indic traditions as the word spirituality does uh, in the uh, modern West. We could also uh, perhaps say, it does sound a bit odd in this context, at least for now, bhavanology, because bhavana is the general Buddhist term for spiritual practice, for, for the cultivation of, of meditative states of mind. Of course, and, and then in the, in the uh, tradition of Islam, the, the, the mystical or spiritual side of life is often referred to uh, using uh, an English version of, a, of an Arabic word as Sufism. And then in, and in, and in Judaism, the spiritual side, the mystical side of Judaism is often generally referred to as Kabbalah. So these are 
alternatives to just using uh, the Western-based or the English and Latin-based uh, language for this approach to life. Um, okay, so for now, I'll stick with the word spirituality because the other usages haven't become standard in any way. What is spirituality? What is its, how does it function? In, and I'm going to work with the more narrow definition of spirituality. Well, uh, what we might say, if we wanted to reduce spirituality to its simplest and uh, practical uh, uh, functionality, something that we can really kind of take like an app and, or a tool and integrate it into our everyday lives, Let's think of spirituality as being two practices. One is a cleaning practice and one is a seeing practice, cleansing and seeing. And uh, an analogy is, is a mirror. Uh, let's say that we, we have a mirror uh, and, uh, or maybe the, the screen of your smartphone or the screen of your computer um, and or a window. And it's covered with fingerprints. It's smudgy. It's smudged with fingerprints. It's hard to see anything through the mirror or through the window. And so uh, if you, were, however, were to take a cloth and to begin cleaning it, cleaning away the smudges, well, you would very quickly begin to see very clearly through the window or in the mirror. This is really, it's almost, a, it is a mechanical imagery. And in the and, and at bottom, the spiritual life def, depends upon a mechanism like this. If we were to clean our heart minds of the smudges, of the taints of greed, hatred, anger, which pervade our lives, uh, often in unconscious ways, if we were to begin cleaning them, we would able, be able then to see and what would we see? Well, with our cleansed mind, we would begin to see the spiritual nature of life. And when we see that, we see the spiritual nature of everybody and everything. This is the path to, this is the way spirituality transforms ordinary, everyday consciousness into saintly consciousness. Now, I've spent some time with Sir John's book, and I have come to the conclusion that there were, it was indeed a saintliness uh, to this man. I don't know him personally, but it does come through, this enthusiasm, this, this openness, this generosity of spirit. That's what results from the cleaning process because the cleaning process allows one to see the spiritual dimension of life. Now, Buddhism uh, has, a, uh, has a nicely, nice, clean, cogent, clear way of expressing this. Be before I say anything further, I will say that when it comes to contemplative practice, the Buddhists, Buddhists, not all Buddhists, but Buddhists are often the grand masters of this discipline. For 2,600 years, Buddhism, among its many other religious activities, has cultivated scientifically, comprehensively, in its institutions, which used to include great universities in India and then later in Tibet, and now around the world, people who were dedicated to the art and practice and theory and cataloging of meditation and meditative states. And in the, if, in, in the, in the simplest analysis, uh, Buddhism speaks about two fundamental meditation practices. And one of them is various languages for this, and I'll just use Pali, is uh, samatha, in Sanskrit that's shamatha, and in Pali, vipassana, or in Sanskrit, vipassana. And that's, that's a lot of language I know, but shamatha can be translated as calmness or tranquility. And vipassana can be translated as insight. And so what is tranquility meditation? It's calmness meditation. It's the meditation of calming the mind. How do you calm the mind? You have to clean it of its, of its defilements. How do you do that? You begin to focus. You begin to bring your mind to a point of, of stillness. You can only do that when you've done the preliminary work of sort of cleaning away the defilements. And that stilled mind... There's a third aspect in Buddhism, it's, it's sila, that's the purificatory practices. The stilled mind, the mind freed of the fingerprints, becomes uh, a transparent, like a window pane. It becomes reflective like a mirror. So we have then the two practices of concentrate, concentrative meditation uh, and insight meditation. Calmness meditation or insight meditation. Um, now, today in uh, cognitive, excuse me, in contemplative neuroscience, uh, 
researchers such as Richard Davidson at the University of Wisconsin, uh, a mindfulness a meditation founder, John Kabat-Zinn, a happiness, uh, the happiest person in the world, Mathieu Richard, uh, are uh, mostly uh, from Buddhism, are, are engaged in trying to uh, map what happens to our brains when we meditate. And they have, uh, they have, they describe, they give terminology or use terminology for these two approaches. One is focused attention meditation, that would be concentration meditation, that's the cleaning side, and open monitoring meditation where you observe the breath and other mental activity, that would be the seeing side of meditation. So this is the essence of spirituality.